Okay, so uh, welcome back to a new year of D&D &D ish. Uh, we're up to session number 84 uh, and we're in season 5 with, episode, with the fourth episode of our fifth season. So characters are all 10th level. Woohoo! Uh, we have uh, five people today. Today, well, four players and me. Uh, at the table today we have Debbie. Hi everybody. And what character are you playing today, Debbie? I'm playing Kevin. She's a gnome paladin that I usually refer to as a gnome. And uh, very clever, so should look forward to insulting Bradshaw quite a bit tonight. And, uh, yeah. I'm sure Bradshaw is looking forward to it too. Absolutely. Speaking of Bradshaw, uh, online we have Mark. No. Um, thanks, Danny. <laughs> um, I'm playing Bradshaw, the um, Jalavan Warrior Weapon Master, who um, is slowly getting used to the um, leadership of this camp that he has at the moment and working out is he to really have this or not. So, well, and also waiting for his wife to turn up. So. Just, yeah. just so you know, on the actual listing of stuff on the website, if I switch yep. it over to it, it does have that uh, he is uh, Lord of um, D uh, oh, sorry, mm -hmm. Dur Durgen Keep, yes, Lord yep, of Durgen yep, Keep. Yep, yep. yep. so um, it's the Underground Keep as well, isn't it? It is, yes. Yep, yep. so um, yeah, we have another half in the Keep as a Valkyrie's so yeah, but yeah, so and also trying to think of a name for his new mount, he hasn't quite got that yet. And Ghost's going to suit it for the time being. So. Yes, yeah, so for some reason the magical items for Jeremy ended up with Bradshaw. No, I, I have <laughs> issues there. Look, you can put one of the things, I will take them and I'll sell them off to somebody else, okay? It's fine. Uh, they're, they're listed twice, that's why I'm looking at it going, hey, something there doesn't seem right. It's going to say, Mark, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with the title or name of Greatest of All Time. Um, yeah, we can, I'm sure we can share it with someone. Hmm? Hmm. What, between you and your mount? No, I don't know if it's a good sign. That's right. Now, that's what's quite content with these current five things. Yeah. Which is very interesting, but I don't know how you draw the intent from the five things, so let's get used to that too. But, even only his wife. Well, I, I'm sure you'll only do so once. Oh, that's right. I'll do so once and then there'll be a new character. <laughs> also online today, we have Jeremy. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, I'm, next I'm Jeremy. I'm playing Dimitri and Dimitros. Um, um, Kaldaran, sage, wise man, advisor to kings, royalty, um, princes, gods everywhere. Um, and uh, that's it. All round wonderful person. And bear with that, one of your cameras is apparently um, Danish. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's see if I can fix that one. Yeah, I may have actually have um, pulled the cable too far. that one how about that one no, that doesn't look like the right camera nope, I can nope. see your mouth moving <laughs> <laughs> well it doesn't really matter you probably had to get the uh, but you probably don't need the extra cameras at this evening so yeah I just uh, if I have a quick look at it and fix it it means that it's Absolutely. not going to stay broken yeah. when I do need it to work Especially because I've had uh, all, all these cables get tangled up while I was trying to replace things. Okay. 
one of those uh, amusing things when you're dealing with um, cameras is that they do mess up. You guys still hearing me on the other end there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still trying to fix uh, said dead camera. So does anyone want to give Mark an update on what he missed when he was away? Well, we've got a couple more introductions yet, haven't we? Uh, oh, sorry, Martin, why don't you introduce yourself? Um, I'm a, uh, a monk, an elf monk, um, and I'm 10th level. And the last thing I remember is working my way through my particular um, uh, sort of transaction. Um, and Ended up swimmingly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and it did end up rather swimmingly for you. Yes. But I don't remember anything more. So, but I'm happy to work around everyone else. Okay. Uh, so, uh, does anyone remember what happened last session? So, oh, well, we were. Uh, heading, we decided to head towards um, like there was a couple of locations, a couple of potential stories that uh, or rumours that Medjury and were looking us to follow up on. Um, and I can't think of the name of the place because it's not quite on the map that like my print out of the old uh, expert set map because uh, it's north of that. Uh, no, actually, no, it wasn't. We actually went to the Ethengar Carne and we were aiming to head across into the Kingdom of Vestland. That's correct. Um, in order to investigate a. Somewhat like an enchantress type person, I think, from memory. Yep. That was apparently taking over the. Uh, or, or having greater influence there than should be expected. However,. Just as we got to the uh, near the border, we were going through the mountains, hills uh, in the west of Bethlehem. Uh We were warned that there were some trolls in the area that were somewhat troublesome. And when we came across them, we uh, found that they were somewhat more intelligent than the average troll. And they set a magical conundrum to allow us passage because they weren't going to allow us to go through their land but they said okay we'll set up this portal you can decide where you're going based upon how you actually activate the puzzle um dimitri obviously was able to uh, work out the uh, how the puzzle worked and using his own innate magical powers was handily able to circumvent and supply all of the required uh, uh, power yeah. options to activate the portal um the is, it, is anyone else challenging this um recital oh no i, I, I i'm sure everyone believes uh, dimitri is this all-powerful being who's just um, letting you wander around with him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it was like I say, it was actually something that, uh, in game terms, it, the idea was we had to actually uh, activate five different points on the portal using the five different elements. And I, 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 as a player, I was looking for this spell list for a while, thinking I can do that one, I can do that one. Hmm, I wonder what other options we've got. And then suddenly remembered that he'd uh, 
picked up a spell when he became a, an arcane trickster, so he picked up an innate spell, a chromatic uh, orb, right. which allowed him to just go, yep, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. <laughs> yeah, five chromatic orbs and he was done activating. Uh, well, four Gosh. chromatic orbs and a, uh, a flame bolt, per se. <laughs> Don't want to waste the first of the spell if a if a, a, a yeah, will do. Yeah. Um. The. But yeah, so so we, we confidently entered through the portal, and found ourselves on a apparently barren coastline, which featured approximately where we were going to. Um. However, a look at the position of the stars or the sun, whatever type of stuff, we realised we were quite a bit further north of uh, Kingdom of Vestland. And uh, we looked around for a bit and we saw a small cottage nearby and uh, were somewhat surprised when uh, Trazel recognised the cottage as being home. Oh, nice. So you went to Trazel's home? So, yeah, so the, uh, we, we went into the cottage and investigated that, and while in the cottage, uh, some odd events happened with the fact that apparently we either were transported back in time or possibly just had visions of back in time while having fallen unconscious or something, um, at which we saw uh, certain events like uh, a gigantic uh, construction of some sort coming down from the sky to land on the ground and then some uh, humanoid creatures stepping out uh, although they were dressed very strangely and the uh, and they interacted with uh, some other uh, locals in the area that were obviously very primitive and uh, basically yes we realized that uh, what we were witnessing was the arrival of the Black Moorians, well no sorry not the Black Moorians, the, uh, the alien races that influenced the Black Moorians um, and uh, I don't know what the Black Morians are. That's probably fair enough because people <laughs> kind of like it in the sense that uh, as characters, very few characters are aware of Black Moor. Right. But uh, as players, Black Moor was a, an ancient uh, technological civilization um, that became uh, too powerful as far as the gods were concerned. And so the gods actually uh, wiped them out, did the whole uh, meteorite type stuff, cat uh, global cataclysm, um, and subsequently also effective uh, erased uh, all knowledge and understanding of Blackmore from the world psyche. And most people can't uh, use magic okay. to translate anything written uh, in the Blackmore language. It's just un untranslatable. Okay. And Magic can't translate the spoken version of it either. However, uh, we've seen the deduced evidence that uh, the shield that we recovered from uh, Castle. Name's right on my head. Um, the one in the Silver Sierras. Uh, Silver Sierras, <laughs> right? Like, um, but yes, because we were hired by the local merchant who'd become, a car, become the owner of the castle um, and his name's on the tip of my tongue but it's not coming. Um, but yes, while we were there we, fa we found a shield in which uh, Red Druid had been trapped for millennia. And considering that uh, uh, was episode one of this storyline. Yes. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> thank you. So, so, yeah, that, so it that happened a little while ago, so I, I do feel somewhat justified <laughs> in not having the name on the tip of my tongue. And it's been an extra month as well. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what did it. Well, also, Although, didn't, also didn't help that it got um, slightly rewritten because the original group decided to uh, burn the tower down, throw the artifact down a well, and um, kill all the locals. 
because they were playing yeah. nice. Well, they, they were hired by someone to okay. evict uh, a tower, people from a tower, not kill them. So they decided to kill absolutely everyone, including the owner's son, who was along with them to show them where to go. Yep. Yeah. And they wondered why their characters weren't welcome in the city afterwards. Okay, uh, so unlike, yes. unlike some of the other uh, party members, some of the other party where uh, one of the members volunteered to go and actually effectively trap himself in the shield for long enough for Edrian to get out in the world and do stuff. So the, the to links back six months to get out of it. The links to the characters now is that the character Redrian who's been sponsoring you to go off and investigate the world uh, was on that starship that crashed. Yeah. He was he an, he an engineer or something type stuff. Yeah. And the starship crashed um, like 30 odd thousand years in the past. Uh, Blackmore was only 4,000 years in the past. And uh, the starship is at the point of recorded sentient life on the planet. So it's sort of kickstarted thing to But that's a bit like it, okay. <laughs> Only very limited knowledge of that would be generally available to the characters. Yeah. But obviously, all of us have now just witnessed it. Yeah. And I'm sure you'll all happily sit down and listen to the explanation from Dimitri on exactly what you just saw. <laughs> one thing you each saw as well was that there were two visible moons around the planet when there had only been one visible moon uh, in the time you're from. Exactly. There, there's rumors of a second moon, but that's more for, you know, scholars and uh, well, sages what, and all that sort of thing. Wasn't the second moon part of what the gods used to wipe out Blackmore? Uh, no. Uh, the, uh, the fact that uh, people say the gods wiped out Blackmore is a misnomer. Uh, because the... Uh, well, whilst the characters believe the gods wiped them out, the yeah. reality is they wiped themselves out. Yeah. And the gods went, oh crap. How, how are we going to save the world from what the Black Boys did to them and themselves? <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's because of what, they, what the Black Moreans did that the uh, anti-tech um, uh, belief system um, sprang up amongst the elves. Yeah. So the elves believe that technology is evil because it will bring on the uh, destruction of the world. And uh, the Nithians uh, went high tech just before they uh, almost destroyed the world as well. So it, it's one of those... Um, what are Nithians? Uh, a, a Egyptian light people who got uh, wiped from the surface of the world that no one can remember. Uh, okay. A and Corrin was the name I was trying to think of. Yeah. So it's Corrin Key. Yeah, Corrin Key. So. Thank you. So that, that that's the context around um, where that comes from. So I think that's enough of a brain dump. Thank yeah, you very um, much. Well, and, and technically, uh, Corellan in his previous life did meet the Nithians. Ah. Because when we went down to the Hollow World, Nithia was one of the areas where we went through. I think, I'm pretty sure this party went to Nithia, didn't it? Uh, this or was that the other party? The Wednesday, yeah, th this is the party it, that went to Yeah, it was, because yeah, it was all part of the fact that uh, um, they uh, we went from uh, Minos to Nithia. And uh, Plum and kept riding everything but a horse. Yeah. So, so yeah, so the uh, yeah, so um, uh, yeah, Torellian has met the Nithians, but obviously, it, well, they actually, I think you only had some very limited contact with the Nithians. I think Dimitri had to have more contact because he wasn't willing to take whatever whatever method of transportation the rest of the party went, and he took the long way round and had to go and find the Nithians, which ended up being faster. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but you say, you did meet them briefly when we went back and got the, uh, the rewards from the the, uh, the the God Emperor. All right. And how is Debbie 
integrated into this party? Uh, she uh, has been has joined you through um, uh, guidance from Redrian, who uh, she's worked for in the past, uh, awesome. and basically as a another trusted member of Redrian's investigations, uh, she joined your group because well uh, she heard you needed the uh, smart <laughs> person to join you. Cool. Or, or possibly the person to interpret the Dimitri for you. <laughs> <laughs> the god like. Yeah. So okay, I think between the two of them you'll need someone else to do the explanations. <laughs> I think they're as smart as each other. Uh, yeah, um, but, but yeah, we, we so, um, so the room you are be uh, in Crit, your- Critter has been with us for at least three sessions a couple of adventures i think or a couple a couple processes so well she was there for everyone's uh crowning um uh, that's right yep and yep. Uh, also got um herself a uh knighthood congratulations yes so uh technically yeah that's right yeah because basically yeah we pick 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 that up when uh effectively uh, when we finished off the time loop yep. scenario, didn't we? Uh, that is correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Trellin would have uh, gotten some form of awards as well. We'll figure that out in between. But I, I, I was waiting until you came back before we worried too much about it. And uh, your the inn that you've come to is a, a mechanical marvel that uh, has weird angles everywhere. Doesn't look like it should stand up on its own, and uh, doesn't even look like um, the gnomes themselves would have made it. And yes, I what I called a cottage, as Jacob's um, home, was yes, kept out like a, a, an inn or a tavern. So. Uh, quite, quite a large um, complex, apparently. So yes, uh, I, I, it was bigger on the inside. <laughs> well, considering you found yourself in the past, yes. So you are now sitting uh, back in the inn after uh, witnessing what appears to be a uh, starship crashing onto the planet. Uh, you did see the wreckage of uh, part of it land before you, seeing the SS Beagle. Yep. Which is where the fact that we know that Redrian was on that because he said he came from the Beagle. So. And, and the other element that I wanted to, um, I guess, clarify is that I had the selection of a un whatever um, magic item, and it's the Ring of Evasion. Yep. That is perfectly fine. You got yourself a Ring of Evasion. Cool. So you're you're all sitting in this uh, strange inn that seems to have um, uh, various um, um, uh, bottles from uh, all over your history, as far as you can tell. And, and has a, a small bookshelf with space for three books. Unfortunately, they are not there as soon as you go to grab any of them. Thanks to Nick, you found out. Okay. Because they were the, the, the Dragon's Diaries. <laughs> it was Hitchens to read, but apparently he couldn't. <laughs> so, um, but having having seen what we had outside, uh, yeah, Dimitri's going to have a better look around this uh, cottage to have a look at some of the uh, different accoutrements and decorations and things like that just to see what might be on display. Okay, uh, having a look around, you see what appears to be a gnomish um, wedding ceremony um, uh, in a picture frame with, uh, it looks as if um, a couple of you are actually uh, attending the ceremony. Mm -hmm. So you uh, recognize the, uh, the, 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 the apparent loving couple? 
Uh, no, you don't recognize a loving couple, but okay. uh, uh, most of you look uh, a lot older in that um, picture. Fratcho mm. just looks at a girl. I'm at a gnome wedding ceremony. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just out loud, doesn't put any context, just doesn't say, just looks like it's just in shock, you know, for at least five to ten seconds. Well, hey, Bradshaw is a lord of a gnomish kingdom. Yes, but still, still, <laughs> he's getting used, he's still getting, he's not even gone over it yet, Martin, so he's still getting yeah. there. Yeah? What, 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 you, what you didn't register there was the fact that whilst we're all in the picture, you're the celebrant. <laughs> Oh, did you really have to get in my <laughs> Okay, so I'll put that in there now. Am I the celebrant, Mum? Am I the celebrant? Uh, Bradshaw is the celebrant. <laughs> of course I am. Are the, uh, okay. are the loving couple younger so. than we appear to be? They are younger than you appear to be. Well, look, it does, um, Dimitri point that out. I should Dimitri points it out for you, doesn't he, as well? And uh, you can see uh, yeah. uh, one of the, uh, uh, that, uh, characters in the portrait drazzle is holding a very similar bottle of alcohol that, that you drank earlier. Me? Uh, no, Quigner um, drank, uh, uh, drained um, a uh, gift from the uh, wedding ceremony to drazzle in the picture. Yes. Is drazzle in the picture or is he the painter? He, he is in the picture. <laughs> Do any of the, yep. do either of the loving couple bear any slight familial resemblance to me? Oh, all gnomes look alike. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yes. Uh, one of them does uh, look very uh, familiar to you, just that you can't place them. Just got sort of a little bit like your dad, a little bit like your mum, a little bit like you. So I've completely drained this bottle. Is the bottle still there? The empty bottle? Yeah. Pick it up and have a look at it. Just, it's definitely the same one. Compared to uh, the, the one, one you're holding is a little more faded. And a little more empty. Well, it's completely empty. But it did taste good. So, if I'm older here in a photo with Drazzle, he's holding a bottle of wine that I have just drunk. Mm -hmm. Debbie, be aware, you're very quiet from our end. Okay, uh, let me just make sure that microphone is working. Uh, well, it is working. Uh, let me see. Okay, so try again. Is that any better? Uh, certainly a bit better, but yes, okay, still quiet, but certainly more audible. Well, apparently it was set on directional mic, so. Uh, ah, right. <laughs> Not, not facing Debbie at the time, that makes uh, sense. No, I just put it on a uh, surround mic because yeah. it has three, uh, four settings on it. One of those technical yeah. things that I, I didn't actually sit down there and check. <laughs> and the fact that I actually have a second mic here that I forgot to get out for me to make it easier for me to actually be heard on recordings. One of those things that you do when you haven't been doing it for so long. So, if I, so oh. you've got your mic, I'll bring mine a little closer. Is that any better, Jeremy? Thanks, back better, yeah, thank you. Yeah, much, much, much better there. I can definitely hear yeah, <laughs> So, yes, uh, you, you do believe that um, with time travel, if you don't attend uh, that wedding and give Drazzle that um, bottle, you create a paradox. Well, Which then sends the uh, time fiends after you to erase you from existence. That's, Which fixes the paradox? That's prob probably a suboptimal outcome um, to be erased. Well, then it erases any descendants you have as well. Well, then the wedding won't happen, which would be another paradox. <laughs> if this really is one of my chillins. Um, well, it might just be someone else's children instead. Because oh. time does, you know, make things still happen even if you don't exist. There are other doors in this room that we're in. There are lots of doors in this because room. Because going through one of the doors impetuously 
by me, if I recall, was what mm -hmm. actually took us to the but. to the plane crash, to mm -hmm. the space starship crash. Mm -hmm. So, does anybody think that we could go through another door and see what lies beyond, or is that a, a rash decision? Um, I, 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 I think that might be a yes. The boat <laughs> park, wasn't it? <laughs> So we could go, but it would be rash. <laughs> could be worse. Could be a rash. Um, it could be a celebrant. That's that's, <laughs> that's armor rash. It's just uh, armor rash. Bet, well, be, be, okay. well, certainly Dimitri's before uh, he's going to go through any doors. He certainly uh, he's looking around to see if there's any other decorations. Okay, there was a lovely uh, painting of a gnome explorer. Oh, well. I should we face that? It was definitely paint work. It did look like paint work. Okay. It, you could see brush stroke, brush strokes on it. Yep. And it was. Um, As opposed to being an exceptionally fine painting, where you can't even see the brush strokes. <laughs> and look, it moves slightly. <laughs> and, and it's sort of the 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 the, 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 the paper on which it's drawn is is almost smooth and glossy. <laughs> and look it glows from an inner light <laughs> so yes uh, looking around you do see uh, um, the uh, goblet that you were given at your award ceremony sitting on one of the shelves as in my bloodstone goblet yep yep that's the one that's under my name yep that's the one yep. the one that's under both names actually oh, is it both names okay yep oh yep see sorry yep Um, uh, I was going to say, hey, do you mean you really are, uh, because uh, the name that uh, I, for, for my elevation, receiving a bloodstone encrusted chalice was uh, notably from a certain Galantrian prince, specifically the Moldavian Galantrian prince. Are you trying to claim the, uh... No, 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 no claim at all. No. <laughs> Don't want to touch anything of Demetrius from the bank line. <laughs> well, no, no, I thought, you, I thought you meant you were claiming it as a gift you'd give it to Demetrius. <laughs> no. No, no, no. What would I get? The best you get out of me is one gold, okay? That's oh. the best you're going to get out, every, every out of me, and it's, unless I change, okay? So. Honestly. Well, no, 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 that's not true. Honestly, Bradshaw, the I wouldn't touch anything of Dimitri's, even with yours, so... Okay. The, the best that Bradshaw could get out of Dimitri would be his disappearance. You think that would be, but, <laughs> but no. I, it, over time, he's, he's quite kind of gone accustomed to Dimitri. don't know why, but over time... No, 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 I mean, the best that Bradshaw could give to Dimitri. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, did, I did that. I did that for a bit, remember? Yes, and then you came back. Well, you just killed my character off, didn't you? It was my fault. Harsh but fair. Oh, not you, but somebody else. Did. And, and, and you still couldn't hold on to your hammer. Well, that's true. True. <laughs> Sorry, but yes. Okay, so he did get his hammer back. So that was a yes, magical item he got. Yes, I know. Um, but it wasn't actually the same hammer. It was the same hammer that he'd thrown away. He claims it was Dimitri saw through his facade. <laughs> um, the Trackle. This appears to be an odd uh, piece of crockery you maintain here. Oh, uh, Dr Dr Drazzle pick up when you died. Uh, Keepsake. I, I, I'd go, he died. Well, ascended, probably better word. Drazzle, Dr 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 Drazzle yeah. shrugs at that um, terminology. Yeah. I'm liking Drazzle more and more at the moment. <laughs> so. In thespian terms, it would be nice if he... Dry, he died more, or is it dried? They say, isn't it? Well, you Never can mind, die I, multiple times. I need to drink more wine. Clearly, I'm sobering up. 
starting to make no sense. And you can see that there are um, various things around here that uh, belonged to uh, former members of the party on various shelves. And presumably uh, other items as well that we don't necessarily recognise that belong to former members of our party. <laughs> but other characters we might be involved in might recognise them as, <laughs> as pieces. Yeah, well, I'll have a look at these oh. these items. Oh, what, are, what, yeah, what do we recognise now on the list? Well, uh, there's a uh, set of hands sitting on the uh, one of the bookshelves. <laughs> okay, okay, gotcha. Okay. What, what, one of them's black and one of them's green. But they look like they came from the same person. Mm, okay. Actual I know that one. Oh, or not I as a person. Uh, uh, actual hands. Okay, no. There's no feet to do it underneath them? Uh, no, the, the feet weren't there because they weren't part of the story. Right. I remember them coming off at the same time. I oh, know they, they came off after the case. So. <laughs> they did. Do I recognise anything? Uh, you see what appears to be a um, uh, timepiece from your family. It was your. Uh, look, looks almost identical to your dad's timepiece. Dad's watch that his friend carried home from the war in such an unusual place. Uh, you check your pocket. You, you, you're still carrying it. I'm carrying it and it's here. Yes. Compare. Uh, the one you're uh, on the shelf looks as if it has um, uh, gone through a lot of wear and tear. Does it have a day date function? Uh, looking at it, it seems to be um, stuck um, at about four or five years from now, from the time you're used to. Are they at the same time? The reading the same time? Uh, the one on the shelf's not working. Not working. What time did it stop? It stopped in about five years' time. It stopped in five years' time. Good. So that's interesting. So will it start pro start progressing time? in five years time or well i think the, the, the intent is that for whatever reason the walk stopped in five years right. potentially as i uh, stopped at the moment of quickly's death okay but i look so I look or possibly so, and you look so much older in the painting but i look so much older in this painting that i mean here i look you know Three or three hundred years old, perhaps. That's certainly not going to be happening in five years. Well, maybe, maybe it just failed in five years' time, or maybe time failed. Maybe I asked Bradshaw to wind it. <laughs> Don't get me involved this one. Monkey about it. <laughs> it's a possibility. Possible possibilities are endless. And um, now. I'm just trying to look back through the website at the moment and remind myself because a, uh, a a strange house on the edge of tomorrow type stuff was actually one of the other rumors that was we were potentially investigating which is part of the reason we ended up in the north instead of going off into the uh, kingdom of this land and it, this so does this through, does represent a strange house on the edge of tomorrow because it, yeah but i just don't remember if there was like if there was anything particularly associated to that rumour that Redrian wanted us to investigate, or just the fact of its existence? Uh, its existence was a big thing to investigate. Yeah. So, I, exactly yes, I can't, I can't actually happens. find the, uh, the rumour page again yet. So. Oh. Um, so yeah, so in which case then, uh, We will certainly be worth investigating once we've, once we've exhausted the apparent contents of the room, then it is certainly worth investigating. I believe that Quigley tried to go outside yeah. as opposed to 
what uh, with they call the potential interior doors or more like uh, doors that appear to be interior ones rather than exterior doors do they not well, all the doors um, appear strange and have some sort of um, runes on them okay uh, is there can, can Dimitri recognize or decipher any of the runes uh, he can he can tell that the runes are, are meaningless to him. And me, Same. they do appear meaningless to you as well. Bradshaw, Bradshaw can you make any sense of On the last chance, Bradshaw might recognise them. Does he recognise the runes at all? He does not. And um, Bradshaw goes, "Come on, Dimitri, tell me what they are." They're simply runes. You want to go through there for the uh, the uh, privy? I want to take you through to the stairs. But, yeah, can I... So he's just making this shit up. Yeah, I've got an insight. Of course Dimitri. not! He would do that. <laughs> I've got an insight, Dimitri, on this one, Martin. No. <laughs> uh, God, I haven't used insight for a long time. Yeah, that would involve you listening to Dimitri. Well, that's the thing. Why would I usually listen to Dimitri? <laughs> um, oh, I've got a plus three on the insight. Oh, there we go. I might have a chance here to work. So, that's my first dice for 2023. I've got a whole 10. I'm absolutely certain Dimitri will beat that. Well, I've got a minus one on my de deception. Yep. So I got 11. <laughs> you still beat me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sussy, but I feel that mm, Dimitri's a changed man. I'm sure he wouldn't lie to me now. So. <laughs> <laughs> so which room does uh, Bradshaw head towards? Oh, Bradshaw not going to read, he just didn't want to confirm whether he was bullshitting or not, that's all. So, it makes sense, Martin, so. It was right. just a bit of a, I, I just picked up on a change of tone in his voice and just didn't, just trying to work out. Um, I think you now, should Now, yes, so the only doors. books in the room were apparently the three diaries, is that correct? That was correct, with the space for two more. Yeah. So, um... Uh, Dimitri's going to take down the, uh, the 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 blood the blood jewel encrusted chalice. Yep. And, uh, and there's a sloshing sound from inside it as you um, bring it down. Okay. Will we carefully take it down there and take a look inside? Uh, it's a blood red liquid inside. It smells a bit uh, of iron. A bit what? Uh, it smells a bit of iron, rusty iron. Oh, iron, okay, yeah. That, that metallic tint, the, the, the metallic uh, tone to its head, yep. Um, and then Dimitri's going to uh, sit down on one of the chair, or at the table type stuff, and uh, just quietly examine the callus for a bit. So. <laughs> okay, give me an investigation roll while you're investigating the cellos. Oh, okay. Chris, the, uh, the other aspect you're also going to do is actually think about just uh, memorizing comprehend languages just to confirm we're not going to be working on that either. But yep, I'm certainly happy to investigate in the, in the meantime. Uh, 17, 23. Okay, looking uh, over the uh, chalice, you realise that one of the bloodstones is missing. Mm. And um, where that bloodstone is missing is a sharp needle. But I did not find that by uh, trial and error. Not by trial and error. <laughs> you were investigating, not um, touchy feely. No, it was more looking at it as a parent focus of something to look at while if others were looking at me. So, um, the but certainly my memories of the stone of the the chalice originally works that it looks definitely complete, and not that I necessarily would have had much to do with the chalice at all. I uh, would have tried not to touch it very much at the time. I'm assuming that I did not notice any uh, poison needle traps on it previously. Uh, you did not take it out of its box previously. 
Yeah, I don't call over that. You, you read the note and went, uh, I'll just shut this box and put it off to the side. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Mental note, said thank you, the card. <laughs> Uh, um, but yes, uh, which actually one of the reasons why ex- when uh, Dragzor suggested he kept the little keepsake, I was thinking, hmm, he'd he keep the keepsake for me, but maybe he kept the keepsake for whoever it was that found the poison needle trap. <laughs> so. <coughs> so, but yes, so, but. Dimitri's going to take it the 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever it is, to... Um, you don't really, know, you don't really notice the time like passed. It. Um, uh, it, it, you, it's almost like you're blinking and suddenly you memorize the spell. Yep, okay. Actually, incredible around this, in this sort of fertility. Um, and then, yeah. He will quietly cast the spell and then... Take another look at the runes just to confirm that they are unreadable. They are still unreadable. Yeah. Your comprehension has not improved. No, I'm sorry. I didn't expect it would have been, but it can't hurt to try. Well, actually, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> he knew it could easily hurt to try, but. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> so the, uh, well, depending on what others are doing in that, well, apparently not too long a time, but continue to spend time investigating the chalice, apparently. If they're basically doing something in chat for 10 minutes or whatever, then that's fine. Well, uh, it didn't, you, you weren't sure if it was 10 minutes or 10 hours or 10 days or 10 years. Uh, uh, time doesn't have any meaning here. Well, but uh, okay, just the fact that seemingly he picked up the spell almost instantaneously, memory, but... Apparently, he did also spend some time looking at the chalice mm-hmm. from his perspective. So, it's more a case of this. He doesn't know if he spent more. He doesn't know if he spent more time uh, preparing the spell or looking at the chalice. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So, from a player perspective, do anyone else is anyone else doing anything in that uh, passage of time or timelessness? Well, during that passage of time, uh, Bradshaw has uh, sat down. Trellin has probably um, stretched uh, once, and <laughs> Quigner was busily looking at um, uh, for another bottle of wine. And so, uh, for their perspective, uh, no time has passed. Okay. So, uh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. In which case. Uh, Dimitri will carefully place the chalice back into its position. Mm-hmm. Take, before he does that, he'll take a look and just see whether or not there's evidence of dust in, like, where the chalice was. Uh, there is no evidence of dust at all in this place. No, that's cool. So, and uh, he, he'll then deliberately turn the chalice around so the, the poison needle trap is actually at the back. So if anyone actually does grab the chalice, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't mind it. Um, and then uh, suggest that well, the opportunity to investigate this location is certainly of interest. I would recommend that door. Okay. Well. And obviously, Dimitri will start to go towards there and I th- I take feel a look at it. I feel, it's cut, but I feel that Bradshaw should bravely go, boldly go, really. Boldly go where no dwarf has gone before. Exactly. <laughs> oh no. Because, let's face it, Bradshaw is the heroic leader of the group and he should go first. It's only right. It's only fair. <laughs> I have a... I have a a look of like I turn my head to the side and just give a, a quizzly look at the name, yeah, the Valen, and go. Really, already you've got to that stage, okay? Well, the, 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 the gnomes are paladin, so obviously the gnome, the gnome's telling the truth. How could the gnome not be telling the truth as a paladin? Exactly. 
How much would Bradshaw know about paladins? Go on, I want to put it out there. Uh, Bradshaw may not know about a lot about paladins, but it is believed um, by the general population that paladins can never lie. Because they're so good. Okay. And wonderful. Just like right. that, um, all clerics um, uh, serve their god faithfully. Yes. Okay. They're, they're almost as wonderful as Bradshaw. Exactly. To make you, I should say. If he says that, I'm, I'm going to do an inside check. If he doesn't say that, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, no. no cool. Okay, cool. Well, if you don't say that, so you should say that. No, no. Dimitri's not even, uh, didn't even respond to the apparent statement that uh, Bradshaw was our fearless leader because he was looking at the door that he'd collected to check for traps and things like that. And as you're checking for traps, the door opens. And everyone finds themselves standing in a, on a plane in the middle of um, nowhere. You're not quite sure where it is as you hear the sound of um, something rumbling um, towards you. Okay, Dimitri, this is really why I wanted Bradshaw to go first. So, the, uh, well, I'm assuming, I'm assuming everybody's actually effectively standing there with you. Okay. And, and are we effectively all uh, like the sort of the same distance apart as we were in the room? Uh, you're, so, you're almost standing shoulder to shoulder at the moment. Right. Okay. So it is almost as if we we did all decide to walk through the door and then stand on the other side, as opposed to the uh, the opening of the door causing the uh, the room to disappear and having the us deposited in a new location but with our same relative position, so... Um, so in which case, obviously it wouldn't matter whether Bradshaw opened the door or not, but... Um, but yeah, okay, so we're on a plane... You, you described it as a plane, are we talking like a, a featureless plane? Uh, flat, you, you, flat terrain, you, or...? It's dark, you're not quite sure exactly what sort of terrain is around you. Uh, it feels rather flat. Um, you can see uh, stars above, uh, a single moon in the sky. Single moon. Okay. Uh, Dimitri's certainly going to be looking through his goggles with dark vision just to uh, see if there's anything more visible in this darkness. Um, and assuming there's, if there's not, then uh, he'll be uh, looking up at the stars to try and estimate if they're our stars and when they might have been. At the same time, to be able to make more uh, this rumbling noise coming. Uh, we'll try and determine, hey, what's that coming towards us or not towards us? Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure I'm in the I'm in front of everyone in the direction of the whatever's coming towards us. Um, but I've also got my um, dwarven dark vision. Um, it's only 60 foot, do I? I don't see anything within 60 foot at all. Well, in 60 feet, I'm, I'm sort of using some of the pathfinderisms here. You, you see um, things in colour, but beyond that, it's all in black and white. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. But, but the idea being the fact that it's, um, yeah, can we get more idea of what the actual terrain is looking around? Uh, it, it, it really does um, uh, look very uh, featureless where you are right now. Okay, yeah. Um, and a, a, as you're looking around, uh, you see what appears to be a floating uh, city coming towards you. That, that's the closest you can um, uh, imagine it, as it is um, uh, a lot of uh, straight lines and um, shiny surfaces, and it's not touching the ground. And there is a big rumble from it coming your way. Okay, so it's, it's the sort of way to touch it. Uh, yes, uh, stand where you are. It's not that close to the ground. Okay, how high above us is it? Okay. Uh, you, you're thinking it's probably about five, ten feet above you until you realise it's quite a distance away. It's probably about maybe uh, two to three hundred feet above you. And in that case, that much bigger as well. <laughs> um, does it appear to be? Does it, do we, can we recognise any of the construction materials? Uh, you said it was uh, straight lines and flat surfaces and things, but... It's not like anything you've seen in the past. I'm not surprised. 
I, I would much more regret the feet in the future. Long, long, long way in the future. <laughs> um, does it bear any resemblance to the beagle? Uh, well, you only saw the beagle while it was in a flame um, coming down to crash. You never actually saw yeah. it outside of the um, uh, fiery crash it made. Okay. Are there any people visible around the edges of this city as it floats towards us? I will give you a perception roll to see if you can notice. Perception is always useful for things like that. I have rolled 13 perception. 13 percent? 13 is my perception roll. So okay, I thought you said 13 percent at the time. <laughs> Okay, 13 on your perception roll. You do notice that there seems to be um, smaller um, satellite vehicles around this larger vehicle. Can anybody, can you see the smaller vehicles flying around this? Thing? Does anyone have a spy glass? Yes. I do. Dimitri also carries a spy glass. <laughs> because I, I had to ask that group on the Tuesday night and there's like, spy glass? What's a spy glass? <laughs> Thanks, uh, we're on a ship? What we have a spy glass for? Um, so I think that the Dimitri's original uh, group had a spy glass. Uh, and spy glass, yes. one pound. Yeah. Yeah, I've got the spy glass from the Hollow World Elfation airship shot down <laughs> by the Haldanic Knights when we first arrived. <laughs> I don't have that level of detail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, you both fly this white glass. But, uh, but uh, Dimitri is actually going to be going for casting fly and uh, having a closer look anyway. So. Okay, so I'll give you both perception rolls. And while they're doing that, I'll give um, Bradshaw a completely different perception roll for a different reason. Okay, that's fine with me. So, so, so Dimitri got 11 on perception. Yep. With his plus 10. <laughs> <laughs> Realises that uh, he momentarily had the, the, the spyglass round the wrong way. Yeah, they kept getting further away. Why are they getting further away? <laughs> and, and, and so then decided to cast fly. <laughs> how, how did Trellon go with his uh, roll? Um, so I roll that here. Yep. Um, yep. Plus seven, twenty-two. Twenty-two. So Trellon having a look through his spyglass, uh, you can see what appears to be um, uh, platforms with people on them, uh, holding uh, fifty or so different people on these tiny little platforms floating around this larger vehicle. Uh, do they look? Aggressive? Uh, they uh, have uh, weapons, or they don't look like anyone you um, uh, recognize or a race you recognize because they don't have any uh, visible elemental affinity. But do they have any weapons? Uh, they have shiny sticks. <laughs> shiny sticks. All right. I guess oh, I'm cautious of them. Yeah, so, sorry, go go, man. Go. Yeah, and what did um, Bradshaw get with his roll? I got 11 on the dice with a plus 3. I got a 14. You got a 14. Okay, so uh, while everyone's pointing in one direction, Bradshaw looks the other way. <laughs> and Bradshaw sees uh, what appears to be a um, gigantic five headed dragon um, landing um, nearby. Well, I have, uh, uh, it, it, it's, uh, each head is uh, bigger than uh, the biggest dragon you've um, heard of in, ever heard of in history. Um, guys, you might want to look around the other way. Oh dear. This isn't a good outcome. If it's well, interested okay. in us. Do, 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 look, do we just cast you a spell for this round anyway? Um, the... But yes, when you said dra land, the dragon lands nearby, mm -hmm. how, how nearby are we talking? Oh, probably within a mile. That's right. nearby for something that large. Excellent, okay. no fun. All right. And the uh, the the floating citadel. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You said it was two to thirty metres of the up above us. Yep. Uh, how, what about longitudinally? How far away is it? So, it uh, us? A, a, as you get some idea of um, its scale, it's also close to a mile away from you. Right. Okay. So, if, but, I, is it, can, does that put, put the dragon and the city with, two miles uh, apart? Dragon. Uh, probably about. Uh, uh, they are seem to be heading towards each other, okay. so they are okay. probably closer to each other than they are to you. Okay. So I the dragon. I the citadel would be able to see the dragon if we can, because hey, it's only a couple miles away. So <laughs> assuming, assuming we're in the middle, and yes, I don't know if the because yeah, because Grant still looked the other way, didn't he? Uh, he, so did, he, he did look the other way, and you're you're roughly in the middle. Yeah, uh, so between the two forces. So more of a more of a triangle uh, where you get to see it um, looking like it's about to go in front of you and have the uh, whatever's about to happen happen right there. Yeah. Okay. And, the, and well, as as Brad came in to fly up for a closer look, uh, if they were a mile away, it will take a little while to actually fly back to Kennedy. But if they're both closing on each other, then that will make it be quicker. It will. Yeah. And I, um, I was, I, if, if Mitch is not listening, I'll just say, maybe we move out of the direct way of these two things. <laughs> and what about Quignor? As, as Bradshaw alerts us to this dragon and I turn and mm. see it, do, is it, does it look as if it's interested in us or in the city? In the city itself. Okay, I'm with the suggestion to get the hell out of Dodge here then. Let's move out of the way because I have a feeling that two monstrous objects are about to collide. Yeah, so that's why Dimitri's moving to get a better view. Yeah, or sure. to be pulverised into smithereens. Okay, and as you're watching, the front of the Flying Citadel seems to um, light up in various bits, and uh, lines um, go from the Citadel uh, and uh, straight to the Dragon. Can we see that as well? You can see that from here. It's it's the equivalent of uh, sunlight um, going from the Citadel to the Dragon, uh, lighting up all the land around you as it hits. Is it hot? And you can feel the heat from here. Let's take a step back here before we're cooked. And uh, looking at it, the, the, each of the beams look to be at least um, uh, 30 feet wide. And would there by any chance be five of these beams? Uh, it looks to be about uh, 20 odd different beams. Okay. Uh, flying from the Citadel up the Dragon. Not just one per head. Then. I'm going to start stepping backwards away from this incoming whatever it is. This could be a huge force of energy and I think it will be unbeneficial to our health. Mm -hmm. And uh, a as you watch, it seems to uh, rip apart the five-headed dragon. Dragon steaks for dinner. As it seems to uh, uh, send body parts of it flying all over the land around you. Fortunately, I'm oh. nimble on my feet. Very yeah, was, the, was the dragon as big as the citadel or not? Uh, the dragon was as big as the citadel, yes. Okay, cool. And you oh. see what appears to be a... Uh, silver dragon uh, coming from the sky above uh, flying at the uh, citadel. As big as the five hundred one? Or as, as, big as, as big as the five hundred one. Okay. What's going on here? I don't think we should be involved in this. These are, these are monsters. Where is... Where is that damn fool? When, when Dimitri gets up to about the, the two to three hundred feet high type stuff, so maybe a little bit above like the, the base level of the citadel, uh, obviously it will still be quite some distance away, I'm expecting. Uh, he'll then pull out his spyglass again and be having another look down, effectively aiming to look down the citadel from above, um, and also take a look at this uh, silver dragon, the remains of the five-headed one, etc. Okay, uh, as you um, do it, I'll give your character an insight roll. Uh, that's so familiar. Uh, Seventeen. Insight with plus. Yep, twenty-three again. Okay, so 
Uh, looking at the scene um, that's happening before you, uh, you do remember reading an ancient story about mm -hmm. how uh, the dragon gods died. Ah. Do you want to share that with Okay, us? well, I'm not actually with you at the moment because I've, I've flew up about a few hundred feet up in the air. Okay. Right. Um, are you... The hot book was silver, was it? Uh, platinum, actually. Platinum, okay, yeah. Uh, okay. I hope I had gold, but yes, platinum makes more sense. He's, no, he's known as the platinum dragon. Exactly, yes, that, that's it. So, um, and you watch the big um, silvery dragon slam into the side of the citadel, uh, sending both of them tumbling into the ground with a fiery explosion. We oh, okay. are minimum safe distance. And as um uh, as you're well, as you're close to a mile away, you are fairly safe. You do feel the heat come towards you as you watch a part of the um, structure go flying overhead. Uh, and it reminds you of the flying old uh, Nomish City. As it seems that the uh, engine of this uh, that was holding this um, citadel up uh, has just blown overhead and crashed uh, uh, probably a couple of miles to the south. Um, while this is happening, I'm trying to look around everywhere else because I saw one dragon, I've seen another dragon. I'm looking for other dragons. Is there anything else coming through? Yeah, the ancient books, I can't remember in the story, just whether or not there was a, uh, a, a god of the, uh, uh, what do they call that? The, the mineral dragons? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the, the, the names of the old gods was never um, remembered by people. Yeah, but like the only man that, the, uh, sorry, uh, the, there was a, a god of the chromatics, a god of the metallics, mm -hmm. but no, and um, the gemstone dragons didn't exist at that time. And that's what I was going to yeah. At that time, on my storylines, there wasn't any gemstone or mineral dragons, so, yeah. Um, the... Uh, and uh, as you're um, watching this, you, you find yourself sitting back at the table in the inn. All of us? All of you. Um, before the... the, the, the uh, silvery dragon hit the citadel. Did Dimitri get a chance to have a uh, a better look at the features or makeup of the, the the citadel itself? The citadel itself looks to be a uh, weapons platform using uh, high end technology way beyond your time. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, it, it looked more like the. The citadel was made probably more of a metal type thing rather than stone or wood. Uh, looked like, looked to be completely made out of uh, metal and glass. Right. Yeah. And then also from his, to the legend of the death of the dragons. Does Dimitri have a time scale for that? Uh, it's said that the uh, Black Morians did slay the dragon gods. Okay, so we're talking previous to 4,000 years ago. Because that's when the Black Moy went down, wasn't it? That is correct. Yeah. Uh, but do we know how long the Black Moyings were ascended for? No, there's okay. no law on that. No, okay. The, the actual details of what they looked like and uh, what they could do uh, is uh, not recorded anywhere you found. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Or rather, not very happy, but understandable. <laughs> uh, the and was Drazzle with us on these occasions? Uh, he may have been, but you didn't actually notice. Okay, it's up, but was he? Did was he apparently? Did we notice whether he was with us when we saw the Beagle Four? Again, you're not quite sure if he was there or not. Okay, but he's definitely in the room. When we're looking in the room, is that right? He is in the room when you're looking in the room. Yeah. So, Drazzle 
when we've been through these two doors, we've seen events that we know about from the past. Mm. What do you know about that? Home. <laughs> this home shows many things. Is it essential that we go through all the doors, do you think? Yeah. Well, the more doors you go through, the longer you live. Certainly, Dimitri's intent was take a few minutes to absorb. Uh, in fact, uh, he'll aim to pull out his book and pen and write down some notes of what he saw. Um, and likewise, he'll do the same for the, uh, the division from uh, the falling of the beagle. And. Okay, once he's satisfied that he's made as many notes and copied as much information as he can down in his book, he'll be ready to get up and take a look at another door. Okay. Maybe we should let... I don't know whether the other one does anything in the, in the meantime, or whether, except there's no meantime to do it yet. <laughs> well, it, it takes you no, no time at all to uh, uh, spend what appears to be hours working on your book. Yep. And the others are um, basically blinking. You're done. But of course, they could also be spending hours doing it, doing a similar task. Uh, well, okay. so I could spend hours drinking, and it would be a nanosecond of time. I wouldn't be at all drunk. Well, no, it would all hit you all at once. <laughs> you step outside and say, <laughs> Well, if anyone had the other experience the situation of what they've done, apparently after moments, no time at all, Dimitri will get up again from his chair, put his book back down on his back and uh, say, okay, door number three. Okay. Uh, uh, as you go to door number three, it opens and you find a privy. All good. I'll take advantage of the commode. Close the door. <laughs> Does he close the door? What the problem is? Yes. Good. Okay. Just, just making sure. It's got three sea cells next to the uh, wall there. <laughs> so, and of course, what you all noted was the fact that it was the door that he said was the pretty. Lucky guess. <laughs> even, a, even a stop. Even a broken and, watch is uh, twice then a yeah, so Unless it's a 24 hour watch. So yes, uh, by, by the time you're finished uh, and having experienced something that you've never uh, used before, I power with Groovy. <laughs> the, uh, okay. he, he certainly doesn't come out there. He, he uh, doesn't make it look like he had any issues or surprises when he was in the bridge when he comes out. Um, and then we'll uh, pick another door. Okay. Well, you should have gone through another door while he was on the line. Well, I'll start the struggle through another. That's right, Dimitri didn't pay attention to what he did. Okay, so. Uh, He's keen uh, to find out the mysteries of the universe, or the multiverse, or the cosmos, or something. All of the above. <laughs> So a, a, as you um, go to go through the door, the door appears to be uh, shut at the moment. Okay. I will again be uh, examining the door for tracks. And if I find no tracks, and the door has not yet opened, or we uh, closed it, I will attempt to open the door. Okay. Uh, as you try to open the door, you realize the door doesn't have any handles. Speak. Well, so, I will be trying to give it a push first of all. Speak, friend, and enter. That, that has worked before. I'm sure it will work again. Um, <laughs> do, do the hinges appear to be on this side, or, the hinges, or is there no hinges? Or? Uh, you, you can clearly see the door, but there's no hinges. Okay, so that means it's more likely that the hinges are on the other side, so it's more likely that I have to push. So he'll give it a push, you can mm -hmm. see. It doesn't seem to open, but you can hear a door on the other side of the room start to open. Okay. I will 
continue to apply pressure to the door, uh, looking at the other across the room at the other door. It appears that Drazzle is opening one of the doors. Are you suggesting we should go through that one, Drazzle? Drazzle thinks uh, this is the time. I would not suggest opening two doors at once, so since that one's open, we'll go that one. Okay. And so for the first time since you've been in the inn, you actually walk outside the door. You, you can see the inn behind you. Okay. Oh. We're out. Wow, um, what's, uh, like, so we're outside now, aren't we? And, um, in front of you is a, what appears to be a metallic city of the future. Does it appear to be As reminiscent we see of the, the city that took down the dragons? And we see that as well as the inn. As well as the inn, yeah. Okay. The inn the seems to resemble a lot of that. Okay, so uh, can you see some become. of that um, picture there? Do you want me to blow it up? Uh, uh, okay, so it looks a bit like, well, from our perspective, it looks a bit like a, uh, a space city, like a, a space citadel type stuff. But well, I like, can see the picture. Well, you, you'd probably think more um, of Star Wars and the capital of uh, planet for Star Wars is yeah. how very much the, the picture looks like. Sorry, yes, when I say space, it was yes, so that, that, that sci-fi, other planets, type. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was just showing them on the camera. Yeah. Um, the, but yeah, so, does it appear to be a, uh, the same style as the yeah. city that took out the, the dragons? It does appear to be uh, of the same style, yes. Uh, I can't obviously can't be certain, but it's the same city. Uh, well, th this the thing that the, the thing that took out the um, dragon uh, looks like it would probably have been uh, the equivalent of one building here. Okay. And you can see what what looks like a metropolis with um, right. thousands of those uh, 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 buildings, except instead of being. Uh, Allen Gated uh, looking more like a citadel. These look like uh, uh, mini little castles everywhere um, with uh, walkways between them, flying vehicles, um, gigantic um, uh, uh, constructs uh, moving through the city. Right. And, but we can still see the, uh, the tavern behind us and the tavern behind you it looks like it fits in with this place okay so it looks like we're basically the tavern is part of the, this place and uh we've just stepped out of that particular building you have okay so i look at drazzle and he's still there he is there. There. um where are we drazzle uh we are here home home okay this your home, I show. This, <laughs> this is my home. This whole city is your home, Drazzle? Now he points at the uh, inn. That's my home. So I have the sense that... Does this metropolis have a name that you're aware of? Uh, yes. I call it the City of the Gods. So, it makes you thinking, ah, oh, so I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> Many of your gods came from here, he says. Yeah. It certainly sounds like a place of uh, interest. The, have, uh, are there citizens around that we've seen, uh, that are, like nearby, that are not in flying cars or things like that? Uh, are we attracting any attention, having stepped out of this location? Well, there, there, there appears to be more people than you've seen in one city at uh, one point just mingling nearby, doing whatever their daily routines are. Yeah. And the inn seems to be almost uh, in the centre of this metropolis, as you can see it. Okay. Um, um, how are they dressed? The dress and bearing of the citizens? Uh, they're, they're wearing uh, strange clothing, 
Uh, not one of them seems to be carrying a weapon of any sort on them. Uh, but are we still in our original clothes and carrying yep. our weapons? So we'll look. Uh, and but yes. And they they all look uh, um, very washed out to you. Because most people you see have um, some uh, uh, elemental. Uh, elemental affinity that brings the color out. Uh, those that um, don't have it are very rare. And you can see just uh, in the near vicinity thousands of people who don't seem to have any linking with any color of any sort. They're all just very faded. Uh, but uh, 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 okay. uh, if they're all dressed somewhat cohesively, well, if we're not seeing a huge variety of different styles of dress or um, well, you, you see what you see what appears to be uh, uniforms um, uh, for you could probably identify at least uh, fifty different uniform styles from where you are. Yeah, and space age. They are they are space well, age. Yeah, they're certainly not. Uh, medievally, I guess, is right. right. The, um, well, uh, you, you uh, wouldn't misplace them on Star Trek, for instance. Yeah. Right. And are we attacking attention? Um, not more so than you than you would have imagined. Uh, people glance in your direction and shrug and move on. Okay, so they're not worried about the our odd clothes that they expect. Uh, they are not. So. Um, they don't seem to be intimidated by our weapons. Uh, uh, are, are any of the groups are any of the close enough that we can hear their conversations? Uh, you can hear them speaking a strange, um, uh, almost uh, high-pitched nasal sort of language. Okay. We don't understand uh, what they're saying. Do not understand at all? To me, through uh, assuming that comprehend languages have worn off, because in the time we were else in the past, <laughs> how that works? Well, well, it, well, it has been quite a few thousand years since you cast it. Exactly right. So, um, to me, through will aim to cast it again. Okay. Since it's now in his memory, so. And uh, as so you, if uh, I actually, yeah, okay, you can probably sit down and do it if the. The ritual here because we're not necessarily a big problem, but well, until you memorize it now, so we can do it. So, I believe that means you get an insight roll to try to understand them. This would be a good time not to roll. Uh, insight of 21. And I believe the spell adds 10 to your insight. Oh, does it? Okay, 31. <laughs> Which is one of the reasons why it's an insight roll. So yes, uh, as you're listening to it, you realise that, because uh, it is a comprehend, not a direct translation, they're talking yep. about some form of um, sporting event, um, theatre plays, uh, people refer, uh, have gestured in your direction and said, oh, they must be one of the local troops, uh, you know, uh, asking for money. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, it, it seems to be a whole lot of um, talk about um, uh, uh, structure and daily routine and the weather. There's an awful lot of um, uh, discussion about the weather. Okay. Um, something I just remembered uh, part of that process. The fact that I had to cast the compound languages to pick up that sort of stuff, uh, presumably the amulet of languages that we picked up in the hollow world is not working here. Uh, that would work here too. Oh, okay, so we probably uh, we, we would be able to understand them. Actually, well, at least Dimitri doesn't have it tuned, but he does carry it. So, well, I have it where he's at. So, but not, not um, everyone kept theirs. No, okay. Well, Dimitri certainly did. So, I guess that means that he didn't need to cast content languages at that point, but I don't know the uh, how many others have got theirs on them. Yeah, you're fact, I think actually, uh, I, I believe Bradshaw gave his up. Did Bradshaw go down the Hollow World? He he was in the Hollow World, and I believe he gave up the amulet. Amulet. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. So, um, so and technically, Trellin didn't go into the Hollow World, but um, he did at the same time. 
Barbara Crack, yes. <laughs> the body that he no longer has went to the <laughs> came out of the shadow world. <laughs> the hollow world should cut. Oh no, sorry, the body he's got now came out of the hollow world. The body he no longer has went here. Well the body the body he has now is never in the hollow world. No. Wasn't the, wasn't the body he's got now the gift that he got from the gods for saving them from the... He did, but it never actually manifested in the hollow world. Oh, okay, right. So, so he, 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 he never he, left the hollow world and he never entered it at the same time. So it's yeah, kind so. of Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's hollow world. Well, the, the halfling that he was while he was in the hollow world never left. And the elf that he became um, uh, wasn't in there. Sorry, so, so, but yeah, so did the elf that he became arrive with equipment that the halfling had? Uh, or, not? or did he end up coming effectively, uh, ended up with brand new equipment? Uh, he ended up with brand new equipment. Oh, okay. So, well, in that case then, uh, Dimitri will be uh, listening politely to the, uh, the conversation and uh, obviously, we'll only explain what they're talking about if someone actually asks him to explain. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are they talking about, Dimitri? Can you understand them with your arcane abilities and alleged high intellect? Well, obviously. And what are they saying? Well, they're just discussing general matters at the present time. Yeah, the weather, the, uh, the local results of the Coliseum. <laughs> the winning lotto numbers for next week? <laughs> well, well, yes. Well, they did discuss last week's lotto numbers. I don't think that will help you too much. <laughs> um, well, last week's lotto numbers might come in useful with the way these doors are going. Yeah, I think you might find lucky on a door that goes from last week from here. I don't know if there's that many doors in the place. <laughs> but, uh... So they're just making general chit-chat. So, uh, uh... Dimitri will, uh, try and... Uh, he'll call out greetings to one of the groups when they, if they look in the direction type stuff. Yep. Uh, and uh, one of them comes over, he's got um, uh, a, a bluish sort of um, uniform with um, gold accoutrements. Uh, what time of day does it seem to be? Uh, you can't tell, there's so much artificial lighting around here that, and reflections that they may not, it may be actually night time and uh, yeah, the okay. city itself has uh, lit up. Okay, okay. There's certainly no natural light above that can tell that they go to sun or stars or things like that. So, in which case, then, we can go. Greetings, sir. Uh, we have visitors to your fine city. So, uh, he asks um, you, uh, well, you think he's asking you, uh, where are you from? Uh, most recently, uh, from, uh, b -b 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 what's the name of the, the world that we live on? Mishara. Mishara, you want to be. I don't know, Dimitri, because I don't know what the term is. We're saying Mishara. I would want to ask you, because it's hot to the brun, and Mishara is the world, yeah. Um, yes, we have visited from the world of Mr. Hutter. What are you saying? What are you saying to him? Uh, uh, he, he says he doesn't know what that is. Okay. Um, did you turn the music off at your end or something? Or? I had uh, a couple of um, technical glitches on this end. Okay, no, it, it doesn't matter. It was just the, the realizing that the, 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 sound, the sound obviously changed at your end, so the music, that was yeah. important to you. I don't mind either way. But. <laughs> well, it is, for, it is some place, some ways from here. And uh, the uh, this fine city, 
have you come to uh, uh, learn from the university? Or are you a travelling group of performers? Well, some of my companions might be considered performers, but I say, the uh, opportunity to visit those more, those more learned of your city would be most invaluable for one such as I. Though it does look as if a few of you uh, may have been deformed for some reason. Why don't you go check out the hospital? I'm sure they can fix that deformity. What the hell? What's he yeah, saying? The directions from the university would be most appreciated, thank you. He, 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 he says a lot of stuff that, sound, that uh, translates to uh, somewhere along that direction, do something important. Okay. Thank you for your time, and go the Hurricanes, or whatever other name have to be mentioned amongst the other conversation. <laughs> you still couldn't get the exact name that they mentioned, it was just some sort of sporting a bit. <laughs> I do like how Comprehend Languages is not an exact translation, you get the meaning. So yes, uh, uh, as... Well, um, the uh, does the amulet work in the same as Comprehend Languages? Or? It works the same as Comprehend Languages in that it sense. It is, um, okay. Now, although right, it's got a bit that... Right, no, because the amulet seems to work more in the effect of tongue, does it not? Uh, because it allows us to speak. Yeah. I believe it allows you to speak, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I'll have the interpretation the same as far as comprehension, but yeah. Um, and then uh, Dimitri will yeah, give a, uh, a wave over his shoulder to the other side this way. So, what did he say? Tell us. We're going somewhere where uh, we can find out more information. Oh, okay. That's not terribly forthcoming. It's Dim Dimitri's stick where he kind of teases out little bits of information to keep it hanging. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so we're going to be there for long if, uh, um, uh, uh, if, like she said, um, Creeper basically fucks up and catches up with Dimitri and asks the question of where we're going to start to Oh, yeah, well, I, uh, I, 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 I sort of like yourself, we'd be pleased to know that they've got a university here that should be most worthy of study. I'm always interested in study and learning new things is what I enjoy. But one thing I would like to learn is where we are. Did you find ah. out? Uh, we're in the city of the gods. Well, I rarely uh, I deign to visit such lonely places, but... Uh, take your word for it. I think underlying that question is how do we get back to, to Nistara? All in good time. <laughs> right. Well, okay. As long as we can find our way back to so, the end. It was a good question, but you, you didn't get a proper, proper response. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, from Dimitri's perspective, there's two elements to that question that are uh, come to the end with the same result. One is the fact that from his perspective, hey, he gets to the university and spend time at the university. Hopefully, we don't get back to the for a long, long time. But B, based on the other doors we've gone out of, I'm sure we'll end up back in the, the tavern way too soon. <laughs> Even though, obviously, the experience of this one was a slightly different uh, exit from the tavern, uh, potentially, we will be returned to the tavern uh, when events have concluded. It's just that we don't know what the events to conclude are, because, hey, they're not events that have happened to us yet. So we did. 
So we're hanging on the Friday group to, or is it the Tuesday group to facilitate what we need to be doing? Is that right? Or? Oh, well, no, well, if you go where we are now, I don't see that any of the other groups have any connection to what we're looking to. Okay. <laughs> where A, no longer in or on the SARA, and B, we're certainly not in the time period of uh, 1008 uh, AC. Okay. <laughs> yeah, AC. Um, or any other number <laughs> AC or BC. <laughs> Right. Okay. Let's get to the university and quit the jibber Okay, so as you're walking along, uh, you realise that your uh, uh, that that there are metal and glass walls everywhere. I can run up those. You can. <laughs> um, just just as a as an option. <laughs> Yeah. Can we see through the glass? Uh, some of them you can, some of them you can't. And what sort of things do we see beyond the glass? Beyond the glass wall, one of them seems to have a lot of water behind it. Another one has uh, what appears to be uh, platforms that uh, rise in the sand. No doors in these glass walls? Uh, well, as, as you go up and have a look, um, uh, the glass door opens, it, uh, wall opens itself. And you see a platform just sitting there. Does there appear to be any alleyways between the panels of glass or anything like that? Uh, there are. Okay. Wait, wait, uh, why are we getting distracted by this when there's a university that we could be studying? Well, I okay, certainly, uh, Dimitri's happy for you to, yeah, a bit, spend, spend a bit of time looking around. Because um, he wants to actually uh, consult his spellbook again to, to memorise all the self. So. It may take you a while to remember it here. Yeah. But I'm going to get the idea of uh, taking that time to effectively we memorize, but I can't remember if you said whether or just if you said require actually a short rest between to memorize spells again. Uh, fifth ed requires a long rest to be able to memorize spells. Uh, do, uh, uh -huh. mem you have to memorize like memorize spells after a long rest. Yes. But mm. does it if fifth ed doesn't allow you the option to change your memorize spells through the day by taking time? Uh, it does not buy the base rules. Okay. Um, and in which case then, he uh, would have done the complaint language but he doesn't include in the thing by ritual. So, um, and in which case then you can't do the alter self quite so easily. So, uh, Don't worry about that because if you don't show me where this university is, I might alter you. Depends on how you alter him. The he which got okay, so he, he doesn't need to uh, delay and wait for others to uh, have a bit of a look around. Um, that's not going to help me. Um, He has got a quick way of uh, changing his clothes. So. But, uh, so, yeah, so he will tend to aim to continue uh, heading in the direct, vague direction he's told the university. Mm -hmm. um, do there appear to be any street signs or anything like that visible? Whether it be readable to the question or not, first of all, it's visible. Okay, there doesn't appear to be any street signs, but there is uh, markings on walls. And okay. sometimes sometimes those markings are moving. Okay. Uh, does the amulet allow reading of languages? 
uh, as you're looking at it, it, it sort of um, is saying um, access denied. Okay. Uh, ID not recognized. Yeah. Um, the so in case then you will continue uh, traveling down the direction that we've gone, um, keeping a lookout on these uh, markers on the buildings, etc. to see if we can get any indication. Because so, it also occurs to me that, well, quite possibly, when the stone could, when, when the aliens could normally do a, a comprehend like we could have reading inside the house, a place like this, hey, you probably aren't going to language you need to read here anyway. <laughs> Okay, so uh, look, looking around, you, you eventually um, uh, find that uh, after going for about 10 minutes, you think, down the corridor, uh, all around you is lit up um, red with um, warning, uh, a, a, a failure to identify. Were we still going down what was apparently the main uh, thoroughfare? Uh, you have, except um, barriers seem to have come up um, around you. Okay, so it's not like we took a wrong turn as such, it's sort of like we just uh, going down the back of the... And there's still, is there still plenty of people around? Uh, the people have uh, uh, thinned out a little bit, uh, trying to keep their distance from you. Can I run up the barrier? You can run up the barrier. Is Dimitri saying, oh, no, come back, guys, get back this way? <laughs> I'm not seeing the university, Dimitri. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so Dimitri may need to back up some and we'll try and ask a passerby. So. Well, as you try to back up, you find that you, you are boxed in in a barrier. As uh -huh. uh, Trellin uh, runs uh, about uh, 20 feet up and uh, finds that the uh, barrier is also uh, above you as well. Okay. Mm. Is there anyone else apparently in this area like, we, like with us? Um, no, they seem to have left when the uh, red flashing lights started to happen. What have you done now, Dimitri? We're stuck. <laughs> Can we <laughs> so, obviously, as it says, the, uh, we are missing the appropriate IDs to come into this location. So, so I'll, can we push it? Can so push I would expect areas? that uh, we should just wait momentarily and uh, some city officials will come to explain the situation. And you'll clear up the misunderstanding and get us safely home, is that it? No. So you're the only one who can understand them. No reason to think otherwise. I, I can understand them. But I'm not sure if they understand me, but whatever. <laughs> okay, so uh, while, while you're um, uh, trying to open doors uh, and wait and look around at the same time, uh, you see above you that uh, outside the barrier that you can see through, the roof is opening. And what appears to be a giant hand is coming down. As in the roof that we like the, 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 the barrier force effectors is opening, you mean? Uh, no, uh, something uh, above the barrier is opening. You can see through the barrier still. Okay. Is it, is it a big, big grasping hand or...? It could be. Um, it could be big, <laughs> um, uh, as in very big hand. Yes. Giant, giant hand so, so, I, I guess I'll be some scary from the description. So I didn't think we were under a... Uh, a, shelf, a roof anyway. I thought we were actually open to the sky as far as visible. Uh, you couldn't quite tell you thought it was the right. sky. Right, okay, I can't with that. But now the sky is open and a hand has come down. Yep. And uh, in, in that area where the uh, sky is opened is uh, uh, a darker space with uh, a lot of metal and blinking lights. Is Gravel with us? Uh, he is. He's, okay. he's looking up curiously yeah, at, at the... Um, he's the one that actually opened the door originally for us to go out and try. He is, yes. Um, so. Well, does the hand coming down appear to be uh, set in to, to, to 
grab or it's going to be coming down like or open palm for us to uh, climb onto or well as it comes down you see it seems to um go around the um barrier that uh has trapped you yep and then start lifting it up so i'm going to say well <laughs> yeah grab it with all fingers around the top of the barrier and pulling the whole thing up yep so uh, well, okay. I mean, Dimitri already backed up a bit, but he was trying to back away from the front, just go the back of it, so he's happy to be maintaining position, and he'll uh, aim to take a closer look at the, uh, the fingerprints on this hand. And, uh, it doesn't have any fingerprints. It seems to be just smooth uh, 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 and unblemished by any form of um, uh, organic mass. Okay. And... The, the size of the cubicle we end up boxed in. Probably about, 30, 30, about 10 30, foot by 10 foot? About 30 foot across. 30 foot across, okay. So, yeah, still a bloody big hand. And when you um, find yourself being pulled into that black space, uh, you can uh, you hear a um, voice over the uh, from the barrier saying, uh, applying anaesthetic now. Well, right, guys, be aware. We've had we've had a long day. It's time for a rest. <laughs> really? Is this this is this is the strictest entry qualifications for any university I've ever been to. <laughs> and oh. I've been to a lot of them. Okay, and the next thing you know, and, you and, you, and, you, and Dimitri, is, as he's saying that, he's deliberately uh, lying down on the floor, so that way he doesn't get hurt when he falls over. <laughs> And the next thing you know, you're uh, strapped in some strange clothing, sitting on some sort of chair. Is there Can a way to avoid that? that? There is. Like with the charge of the ring of evasion? That's probably easy to get you out of the strapped chair. <laughs> because you've got to be awake. Okay. The, uh, but, okay. One thing, Martin, yep. uh, the application of the anaesthetic, uh, was that a gas? Uh, oh, I'm immune to disease and poison. So that sows Dimitri, I believe, for the poison at least. No, no, that's, that's uh, exactly that. But Dimitri does have the, uh, the uh, neck place of adaption for the old boy. But except he was perfectly happy to lie down, and even if the anaesthetic didn't actually affect him, he was still happy to lie down and appear to be affected and will not be resisting uh, at this start of the key one, so. But if, he, if, he, if, he, if the uh, opportunity was allowed for him to be somewhat awake, at least aware, then he could be aiming to maintain awareness of the surroundings without resisting. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to resist. Yep. I, I want to run around. Um, Okay, so try, at, try to escape. as you're running around the um, small box, uh, you do hear the uh, barrier uh, uh, saying uh, reducing oxygen levels. Oh. Well, how does that... So the immunity to, to disease and poison, I'm guessing that... Won't, won't help you against the lack of oxygen. Okay. Uh, Technically... Uh, Technically, Dimitri can still go for quite some time because he can breathe normally in any environment. <laughs> as long as there's something to breathe. Uh, well, the way, the way they word it, it seems like the idea of a vacuum is still perfectly qualified. <laughs> it is interesting if you can breathe in a vacuum. Because they can breathe normally in any environment. It so, does, doesn't it? So, underwater, vacuum, I would have said propeller, but. Okay. Okay, so Dimitri is. Okay, can you stay alert in the way? Um, he will happily go along with the requirements. Um, obviously. Is there a way to break out of this box? Well, uh, yeah, possibly. Do you, wish, do you wish to attack the barrier? You can't yeah, I'll do that. Barrier, I'll do that. Okay. And so what's the time class? Uh, you don't know. Yeah. Roll the hit. So, <laughs> can I clarify, are we all... In the same spots. We're, are we still awake or are we still uh, Well, he's, he's deciding to fight back and... Uh, he's, 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 as the hand has come down, okay. and Dimitri said, 
Oh, it's been a long day, guys. Time to go to sleep, and he's like that. He lay down on the ground, or on the floor of the cubicle, like it's currently visited. Uh, Crowlin is uh, not going quite so easy into that good time. That's right. So, so I got a 19 to his. Okay, uh, you strike the wall quite hard. Okay. What damage do you do? To your um, <laughs> to your hand. <laughs> well, it's, it's a flame tongue on the sword. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, plus 2d6, and another 2d6, and 5. Um, that's good. Ah, so that's 25 damage. 25 damage, okay. The fire damage. Uh, you, you uh, strike the uh, edge of the... Uh, room and uh, find uh, it uh, opens up for you and sucks you outside of the box as Is the box continues as the box continues to rise with everyone else. You uh, looks like we should. I have escaped, but <laughs> to, to where? And you you you, you, you find yourself um, in um, darkness with blinking lights all around you. I mean, so with dark vision, can that help me? Well, it 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 doesn't really light anything up for you. You can't quite uh, actually see what is around you. It seems to be more in emptiness. Okay. All right. So, can we see through the transparent walls of our barrier? Uh, what happened to Trellin? All, all you see is Trellin struck the uh, wall of the chamber and then just seemed to go straight through the wall. And we can't follow through the same hole. Oh, there's no hole left when he goes through. Okay, so can we attack the wall in and all try to get out? You can. Are you still there, Mark? What are you doing? I believe he had to duck off for... Uh, he did have to duck off, but I couldn't remember what that happened. Like, he said it was 20 minutes, but I couldn't remember how long ago that was, so... No worries. So... No, I'm a bit strong in here, so I don't know what I'm... So... I struck the... Yeah, you, you've managed yeah. to... And then I've, just, uh, I've been sucked out. Whatever. So you attacked yeah, so the you, you, you so I'm pulled going. out and you disappeared. Okay. Because it, it wasn't, because, uh, sorry, you didn't appear on the other side of the wall from our perspective. Right. But, so, so what, what am, am I seeing? Well, um, we'll see what the others try to do because they're trying to follow you the instant you go out. Okay. Because see whether or not you get company with you or not. <laughs> okay. Or whether everybody ends up in their own private nothingness. Except for me, you obviously, you decided to accept the invitation to head to the university. Possibly not to study, but possibly to be studied. But anyway, who gets the invitation? So I, I'm trying to decide. My sword shield is probably the best. I can bring the sword out of it. I'll have a hit at the wall. And I don't know, I can't remember how to do my chances to hit, actually. Well, I suspect you'll find it difficult to miss the side of the cubicle. It can't much damage. But I still have to run. <laughs> so it is possible to miss the side of a bar. Well, I got 19 yeah. plus whatever modifiers I've okay, got. Okay, so yes, you, you do manage to hit the wall quite so uh, resoundingly. Sword shield is. One D four plus strength and my fire plus two. Well, that's not very much, is it? That's not a huge amount, but hey, it's it's, it's not what you use; it's how you use it. One plus two is three. Okay, so uh, striking it, you find yourself uh, uh, sucked through the wall, and also finding yourself in some blackness. So, with my sixty foot dark vision, can I see anything, including perhaps? Um, so you, you can see um, blinking lights around you, and uh, you get to make a constitution saving throw. And I can't see Trellin? Uh, no, yeah, all because... Constitution saving throw is always good ones. Oh, Trellin's immune to poison. 
<laughs> Constitution I three eighty. Yeah. So that's why you didn't have that Constitution I three eighty. Oh, sorry, we'll die. <laughs> Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay, you find yourself. Um, uh, everything's going blurry. Uh, you can't breathe. Uh oh. And and you feel yourself um, being dragged along something. You're not in that. Uh, there's no air around you. Uh, can I attempt to stop myself being dragged by sticking into the f my knife into the floor? Uh, you can't see the floor. If I wave my maul around that I have, do I hit anything? Quite possibly. You might hit each other. Uh, yeah, well, that's better than dying. With Oxygen style. Yeah, I could have been a company. At least if I could knock him unconscious, so I could take his breath. I mean, I've, I've got, got my cloak of displacement, so <laughs> it would. You've got a good chance to hit him with a fire penalty, so. Oh, that's right. Oh, I'm fairly confident you're not actually in the same vicinity. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, Trellin, uh, you find yourself, um, uh, suddenly uh, in the sunlight uh, as uh, you, you seem to come out the side of a nice shiny um, uh, side of a building okay and, and you're you're about uh, two three hundred feet up okay I can I can run down or up that mm -hmm. what or across that what 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 um, Protrusions might there be? Lots. There are lots of protrusions everywhere. Uh, most of them are um, slightly bent and look a bit um, like they have been a bit burnt. Uh, but there's lots of protrusions all over the place. And a moment later, you see Quigna um, pop out above you. Okay. Coughing and spluttering? Or... Yep, coughing and spluttering. Uh, covered in um, black goop. And I guess what do I need to cat? Um, uh, I misread my numbers. I had 19, not 18. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that makes any difference. Not much. But you are, um, uh, you, you do look below and see uh, just below you is Trellin and then a 200 foot drop. Do, do I need to catch? Am I falling? Yes. Oh shit. I have not uh, can I catch? You, you can catch, but you don't need to catch. Okay. That, that's, a, that's a choice. Well, I, I think catching... Um, is it, is, so it's Debbie... What's the character's name? Quigna. 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 That's... It's, it's Kegnor, actually. It's is that, is Kegner, it? yeah, Kegner. So There's no you. Oh, okay. Okay. Kegner. Um, so, yeah, I, I will try to catch um, Kegner. Okay. Uh, but considering uh, you, you can actually run along walls, it's quite easy for you to catch Kegner on the way down. Kegner on the way down. And... And do I have enough leverage? So the idea behind this, um, the, this ability to walk on walls, um, I don't know if it means I can also carry people. Well, as long as you're strong enough, probably to carry equipment and stuff, you probably, it doesn't matter when you hold it. Yeah, I don't have to carry yeah, so. And okay. and as quickly as it's a as it's a gnome, a small creature, uh, carrying a small creature while you're a large creature, a uh, medium-sized creature, is not that hard to do. Well, I mean, it's that small. I'm well over three foot eleven. I have a strength with strength. Yes, that's fine. Yeah, you shouldn't have any trouble there. So yes, you, you do um, catch the gnome and uh, manage to find a nice place to stop. All right, 
and, and, and then uh, hopefully be able to put Quetna down in a secure spot. And looking around you, you seem to be in a a, a uh, uh, valley um, where everything around you seems to look as if it's uh, uh, melted a, a long time ago. So the edges of the valley are all uh, fairly smooth on the inside, and a rugged um, crater all around it. Thank you for catching me, Trevor. Ah, I thought I okay. I thought I was a goner then, for sure. So I'm just going to quickly duck to the bathroom, and then we'll figure out what you guys do next. Yeah. So it looks like uh, if it's within my power to um, run you down to the valley. Right. Okay. And so we'll have a look around. What I think about first of all, though, is uh, presumably on the side of a building or something, effectively, um, whether you can uh, see in the building, like with the, uh, the, the wall or the floor that you're standing on uh, is actually transparent, and what you can see in and around you. Because, hey, you may be able to see into the, like, your floor and yes. see uh, Grant's your uh, Dimitri and Dracul. Underneath, but we can't see you through the yeah. uh, apparently transferable, although we were apparently down the bottom so before. So, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know where this valley is in relation to the, the rest of the US. But, um, yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. Before I move this. Before you go in there and think about it, you might try and work out. Okay. Is there any evidence as to where you come from? Yeah. For which we need Martin. Okay, sir. So what? Tell us more about this valley and also about the wall that Trellin is walking on. So the wall he's walking on uh, resembles the city you, was, you were just in. Is it glass? Can we see through it? Uh, it's not glass, it's mainly metal. Uh, there are um, outcroppings all over the place, uh, rem reminding you of the um, floating um, citadel you saw. So can I roam around a little bit? to see if I can see in. Uh, this wall seems to be about two miles long. That sounds, sounds like, like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a big wall, big building. Uh, and uh, it's about, probably about half a mile in height. Okay. So it literally is City of the Gods. And you think a big chunk of it is buried. Okay. So the Valley of the Gods um, is the, what we're probably going towards. Uh, you, you, uh, from a place perspective, you're on the outside of a crashed starship. Oh, that sounds, that sounds okay. <laughs> you, get, you, well, just, you just got ejected out through the waste management system. So I, so I have, because I'm immune to the disease, the poison, I don't know if um, uh, Quingar is, no. is, has a similar immunity. Well, well Kenta apparently was a coffee bean cluster when, when he came out of the, the same place that you did, which you were not particularly worried by, yeah. covered in black goo. And then whether or not you also covered in black food, actually. Um, you didn't really notice. That's right. And, uh, but, well, at least on initial inspection, Craig does not face any, uh, not any worse for wear. Okay, cool. 
Okay, so you guys you might have, you might have, have a long term issue with things like that, but nothing might happen. <laughs> so if Quickener is happy for me to run you down the side of the tower or the city, um, then I'm happy to. Sure. Easier than climbing down, probably. So yes, uh, you, you end up on spending about an, uh, an hour getting down to the surface safely. At 55 footers around, just like mm. that. <laughs> you, you normally don't want to go um, off ledges, so... Yeah, I, I, yes, I can understand that, yeah. Particularly, if you're looking for the perspective of a player, uh, if you're on the side of a spaceship, um, you may not necessarily reach the ground directly, you, your wall might go underneath the, the ship before you get, you get to the ground. <laughs> yeah. Or the, well, this one's crashed. So yeah, that's right. I imagine that. But that doesn't actually mean that your wall actually is square. Yeah. Probably yeah, not. Probably, yeah. Yeah. probably is this is the ship you saw crash in the past. And in the beagle. Yeah. This, this, I know. This looks like the beagle to me, Trevor. Which we saw right. in the vision when we went through the very first door. Mm. Like. Okay, so while you're going down there, uh, Jeremy, uh, you. Yeah. Uh, so, so Dimitri is basically uh, noting the others uh, and a basket of way out. Uh, he will put less effort into trying to pretend to be comatose and basically <laughs> roll over on his back, put his arm behind his head and uh, look at the others at uh, Drazzle and uh, Bradshaw. Bradshaw and uh, are you guys don't want to go that way? Both shrug. Okay. Um, you think from Bradshaw's perspective it's too much effort? Well, remember, I would suggest lying down in Hollywood, but I come to you. Okay, so uh, not long afterwards you find yourself... Um, do, do, well, do, do Bradshaw and or Bradshaw come to the Senate? Uh, Bradshaw's fairly resistant as well. Yeah. And you, you've you never seen um, Dreadwell sleep. No, okay. So they both quite happily stand there? Well, but both of them are sort of um, sitting down. Okay. That took your suggestion, uh, sit down or fall down. <laughs> and with uh, the fact that the uh, box is um, uh, swaying uh, as it moves, it's, it's not the most comfortable thing to stand on. Yep. Uh, and, 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 and yeah, so actually we can still see the hand effectively above us, but then you're going down the side as if they're picking up a big box. Yeah, one hand. Yeah. Though, though the hand doesn't actually appear to be attached to anything, as far as you can tell. Yeah, I can't tell. And then you find yourself uh, deposited in a room, and someone in uh, a, uh, a stark white cloak comes in. Um, so when we say deposited in a room, we're talking our entire thirty foot. Cube is put into a space, or uh, the bottom of the uh, cube opens up, and you find yourself um, uh, on a uh, different floor. Okay. Uh, but and yes, okay. So then, uh, lab tech comes in, and obviously he's aware that none of us are actually unconscious when he comes in, so, or at least we should be aware if he's paid any attention whatsoever. Uh, okay, well, as we get dropped to the floor, the big room will then aim to uh, sit up and then stand up. Um, and be starting to look around, but presumably that's about the time the Lotech comes in. Yep. Uh, he, he walks up to Dimitri first. And. Uh, Greetings, how are we going as he approaches? He says. Uh, uh, give me a moment, just got to um, check you for um, contaminations. As he uh, pushes some sort of device against your arm. And okay. you, you feel a quick... Um, so, so, yeah, what's that do? 
Uh, as he says that, there, there's a sharp arm uh, hiss as uh, you feel like something's um, poked your arm. Okay. And then the, he seems to uh, look at whatever it was he poked you with and says, um, Oh, you, you're not from around here. Uh, 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 these, these readings don't seem right. Where are you from? Well, as I explained to one of the other citizens here who was working us on the way towards the university, uh, we come from the, uh, the far off world of Vistala. And uh, most interested in uh, examining and understanding better your city and culture. As well, um, this is Masara. And, and that's uh, interesting because, as I say, one of the most popular said, no, he did not recognize his name Masara at all when I mentioned it. Okay. Well, he, he probably wasn't that well educated. Ah. He knew where the university was, but he never went, huh? No, not everyone goes to the university. <laughs> It, it, it's been in my existence. They're more into sport than learning. They can tell you. They can tell you. Well, they can tell you what the um, stats of their favourite players last ten years are, but they couldn't tell you um, what's on the other side of the street. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's bad knowledge to know the stats of your favourite ball players for the last ten years. But that doesn't prevent you knowing other more useful information. Apparently for these people it does, he says, as he then... No, no. Um, what, what, once you remember everything, but everything is worse. He seems to do the same thing to uh, uh, Bradshaw. And then he seems to uh, recognise Drazzle as if maybe Drazzle's been there before. Uh, uh, he, he seems to um, not worry about it. You think he, he's already done it to him at some point? Yeah. And uh, from what we see of the population that's been walking down the, uh, the corridor previously, had there been any non-humans? No, no, no non-humans that you um, saw. Uh, you probably would have seen maybe a couple of elves. Here in the okay. Yeah. 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 Whether there was any uh, reaction to Bradshaw's being dwarfed? There was. That was the um, uh, discussion about going to hospital. Right. It's obviously he was deceased. Well, the <laughs> deformed. <laughs> deformed was the um, uh, inclination that they were pushing. Yeah. He, he, and he had some sort of genetic disorder. As far as I could tell, the gnome was just um, playing. Yeah. Um, uh, excuse me. Well over three. Uh, our two companions who did not wish to stay for the reception. Oh, you know what they have to bring up? Oh, I think they might have gone out the waste disposal ship. Hang on. Uh, Wow. Well, that, uh, dangerous things generally get transferred uh, uh, through the uh, waste disposal system just because anything goes wrong, they just get it jettisoned out of the uh, uh, vehicle. Or city, as the case may be. Did he say vehicle or city? He said vehicle and then said um, city as well because he knows it's a vehicle, but most of the populace can't understand. Yeah, that's what I said. But in that case, it's a vehicle. Uh, Certainly looked like a. We, we didn't appear to be a vehicle. Oh, uh, you must have come out in the um, city center of the uh, vehicle. It, it's a big metropolis, um, but it, it is a uh, two mile long vehicle, half buried in the crater it crashed in. We believe it crashed um, uh, more than 20,000 years in the past before we came across it and started learning its secrets. Ah. And you say this is the star? It says yes. So where, where is this spaceship 
in, in relation to Mrs. Sarah. Somewhere, Somewhere on the planet. Somewhere on the planet. Somewhere on the planet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We wouldn't have records, and when we saw it land 20,000 years ago, uh, the land would be different to actually specify the land mass. Mm, yeah, okay. Um, and like, there, there, there is also an axis shift that happens when uh, Blackmore dies. That means even if you know where it is now, you won't know where it ends up in your time. Uh, so, it, 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 so, so it talking, it's like, oh, a vehicle you found, but apparently crashed about 20,000 years ago. I do not suppose you saw any markings on the outside of the vehicle before you entered. Uh, yes, there's lots of markings. Uh, uh, we created our language around it. A reference to the uh, USS vehicle? Uh, yes, yeah, he, he touches um, the wall and you see the wall light up and uh, it seems to be covered with text and then images. Uh, as, now, he, as he shows you what the um, uh, vehicle should look like when it is not half buried in the ground. And apparently he's labeled it like schematics for SSS vehicle or something. Yep. Uh, they, they say they've only got access to about 10% uh, of the um, vehicle. Due to uh, collapses in the structure? Sa sa safety reasons. Uh, technology does have its drawbacks. And if you open the wrong door, you can literally fry yourself with heat as hot as the sun. Make sure you read the labels before opening. That would be coming to a void, I suspect. There are. Uh, you and really uh, just checking something from a character perspective and applying all the side of the house. Um, the idea that uh, the Beagle, they, they found this ship uh, 20,000 years after the Beagle crashed. Um, is it reasonable for the Beagle to assume we are dealing with Black uh, it, is, it is a good assumption because uh, uh, the Black Moorians uh, civilization did grow up around um, technology. Yeah. It didn't say if they created it or stole it. It just said that they grew up with technology. Yeah. Um, he introduces himself as Raphael. Raphael. Well, that's the um, and he says uh, he, he studies um, nuclear um, fission. Uh, most worthy field. To be to make explanation implying he understands or knows about it. <laughs> well, he, tell, he, he, he does go into uh, as much uh, explanation as Dimitri can handle about uh, power sources that uh, power the suns themselves. And you relay that information to us who are outside the ship. And, and when he mentions <coughs> when he mentions nuclear fission, presumably Bradshaw goes, Oh, I love fission, the last one I got away. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think of that? Um the Well did when um, Dimitri and his team found Regimen Shield, mm -hmm. uh, I and or in discussion with Regimen Six then, yep. um, has he actually told Dimitri his story of having an NG on the vehicle, etc.? I believe he has, but he was an engineer on it before it crashed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But did he mention? Did he tell us his proper name when he was on the hill? Uh, Benny, Benny Kander was... Benny Kander, right. Um, the, uh, the major... Ah, well, how much of records you found on the ship? Because you are found on the hill, is it? says, um, there, there are some security that he can't get through in files. Uh, they've been able to add files and access their own files, but not get access to the uh, underlying um, storage. Uh, uh, 
he, he's sure that they've got um, uh, star maps in there and uh, a lot of other um, useful um, technology and uh, may maybe even instructions on how to get this vehicle um, to work again. That would be a magnificent achievement. No, I can do two bigger splash. Thank you very much. No, that was perfect. Do we need to Hang on, I'm pretty certain that the, uh, yeah, the, the right boys got to work about 4,000 years ago, the mechanical city, and if it's about 30,000 years ago, the people landed, so it's only 20,000 years ago, he's probably not going to have to get well, I will give Dimitri a religion roll. Eleven. Well, I, I, I won't tell um, Dimitri that he is actually talking to the god of the Shadow Elves at the moment, before he became a god. Yep. But I won't mention that to him at all whatsoever. <laughs> so, in, in the storyline, uh, yes, he was a nuclear physicist of Blackmore. Right. Uh, um, and he, he does ask if um, uh, the elf who is travelling with you is one of the radicalists um, uh, that are following uh, uh, that eco-terrorist um, uh, um, Elsendal. I can confidently say that the elf who is traveling has no particular affiliation with any factions at the present time. But I've signed up with Red Dream. Is it, or is yes. that not a faction? Well, from, from the fact that uh, any factions you're involved in are 4,000 years from now, more or less, but okay. okay. All right. Probably at least, probably at least 5 to 10,000 years from now, basically, we've been, been told so far. Um, okay. Okay. To make you confidently say you're not involved in the factions right now. Sure. And, and also the fact that he knows when you were born and else anyway. Sure, you know. The wood elves. The wood elves. The. 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 To be you're not involved with any of the current factions of the old Africa. Gotcha. Um, not to be but you couldn't get away with it anyway. Um, the... <laughs> so, yeah, so... Excellent. I certainly would not be thinking for a moment that he has any association with the current uh, uh, now, would, would you like me to send out a, a recovery team to um, bring them back? Uh, are they likely to be alive? Have you gone through the waste system? Uh, the <laughs> sensors say that they're um, currently uh, clinging to the wall. Ah, well, that does sound like a girl. <laughs> Um, so, so we do have Klingons on the starboard bow. We <laughs> <laughs> uh, go a long way for that trip. Perhaps it may be worth. Uh, if you've got some parts of the mail, I will uh, write a brief note that you can provide them so that they are less likely to be uh, concerned. Why don't they just send one of you to go with them? Which one would they be least suspicious of? Take the dwarf. Uh, he, he pulls out a device, points out the dwarf and clicks, and the dwarf just disappears in, in some light. 
with, a, with, with a little bit of a hum. To make it funny, please. Sorry, I'll knock you back. <laughs> I believe Mark is uh, not feeling well and unable to rejoin us. He did ask if I could drop him from the call, but uh, at the moment that window's sort of buried under other things. Yeah. So, yes, uh, um... Uh, so, yeah, it's a bit too happy to be uh, spending time, time with Raphael and uh, learning about the game and uh, taking it up if he... the chance to examine um, the... What is it? Raphael working on and any computer systems that he works with to make sure everybody can to be absorbing as much information as he possibly can. Okay, so you get a couple of hours with him while Bradshaw is being uh, uh, leading a, uh, a group of people out to recover Trellin and Quig and Kegna before they uh, get caught in the traps below. I'm assuming he's gradual, gradual, quite happily just staying off the side, no need to eat book. He does. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll go back, back to the back of you guys there and see what you're doing before you see if Bradshaw packs up you before you use yourselves. Okay, so as you're um, going along and do, doing the um, safe descent, because hey, uh, it's, it's not like uh, you, you can see everywhere you're running. Um, you see what appears to be one of uh, a, a similar floating platform that you spied earlier, but only with um, Bradshaw and a, a couple of other um, people on board uh, rising up nearby. Oh, the dwarf is out here with us as well. Wa waving enthusiastically in your direction. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Although, Although I actually want to actually, based on the description about to be trying to. Take the dwarf, and then he suddenly disappeared. Um, technically, he disappeared without knowing anything about what was going on in the didn't he? He did. Because he didn't understand the conversation between the two. Well, technically, he did after he after he got injected. Ah, okay, right, okay, good, good, yep. He thought, ah, he lost the game and the other was fun. He didn't know anything about what he was doing. It wouldn't be the first time the party's done that. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's really perfectly relevant to beat you, not hearing about other ones. <laughs> so yes, uh, you guys get the invitation to uh, come and uh, meet the people and, and not be a security risk. Oh, as you're running around the um, city without a, a valid ID will uh, trip the alarm system. Till eventually it will vaporize the uh, intruders. Yeah. That's a, not a good outcome being vaporized. I hate it when I get vaporized. Well, it, it's either that or ejected out into the minefield below. I've been, I've been vaporized. It got better. <coughs> it's just it's a, a scratch. Yeah. <coughs> Apparently, I'm supposed to drink, not inhale my drink. Uh, no. I just seems to have got it around the wrong way. Inhaling. Or you can inhale like a bit of be fine. I'm sure that you can inhale any drink you wish. <laughs> you may not get it quite as much, sir. Okay, so yes. Uh, after uh, many hours of um, viewing stuff, I'm assuming you're happy to uh, get a lift. To yeah. what Bradshaw describes as the university? Sure, I'm keen to get to the university. This was supposed to be the goal mm -hmm. until we got picked up by a giant hand. Yes, uh, uh, Bradshaw says uh, safety system. Right. I must see if I can get one of those for Castle Kig. Apparently, I thought you were a, uh, you're a contamination. He doesn't refer to the fact that I thought he was a contamination as well. No, well, I have my own thoughts about what it thought about him. <laughs> I doubt he'd understand it if I tried to explain it. He may now, for a little while. Okay, so yes, uh, when you finally get back into the um, structure, you uh, 
eventually find yourself in a room with um, a guy in a big white um, lab coat uh, and he seems to be talking uh, about uh, technology with um, Dimitri. Of course, he's starting to go and introduce myself. Hi, I'm Kigner, and I'm the small. He says, uh, he, he's not surprised, um, though, aren't you a little um, short for a uh, your age? Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know whether it's you've noticed this, but I am actually well over three feet eleven. Uh, I hear Drows on the back um, saying, um, Gnome's not born yet. Gnomes or this gnomes? No, gnomes are not born yet. Gnomes are born. Now, well, that makes me, s what, the eighth wonder of the world, I suppose. Dwarves aren't born yet either. And gnomes are grown from um, dwarves. Ninth <laughs> And uh, Dragonborn not born yet either. But that they like before. before. <laughs> so if the Dragonborn aren't born, then they are the Dragon Unborn or Schrodinger's Dragon. Schrodinger's Dragon. There are a lot of Schrodinger references in this. Well, Trussell keeps showing up before he was born. Well, because as far as we're aware, the, the Dragonborn were only born within the last 20 years. years. That's nothing in the age of a gnome. Exactly, that makes it like a decay. Decay, 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 so think of an well, ant and using that using like twenty words to describe tree. Oh. Although like technically, in a uh, simple magnitude, magnitude right now, Dragon's the oldest, the oldest. Mm -hmm. because his, his birth date is the most birth in the future. That is true. So, so for magnitude, he's the oldest. <laughs> in negative years. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I'm not even I might have been doing myself dirty here. Apparently, I'm 121 centimeters tall, so I'm over three. I'm over four feet. You're you're big for a gnome. I'm a massive person. You're one of the biggest gnomes ever to exist. 121. This time. Well, technically, um, she is the biggest gnome to exist right now, <laughs> and and for about the next couple of thousand years. Well, you could call me the mother of all gnomes, really. That's a uh, big, um, you know, thing to live up to. Uh, <laughs> Especially considering um, you can't reproduce with anything but a gnome. Well, I could reproduce with anything, but it might not be a gnome. My progeny might not be a gnome. Oh no, the, uh, the different species here can't propagate without magic. I'm I've sure got the, the black boy, boy can help. help. Well, they probably could. Cloning. Uh, that's that's right. right. You, you could well be the mother of all those. Fantastic. Depending on exactly, exactly when they know coming into existence. <laughs> well, firstly, the uh, dwarf, the uh, race of dwarves that Bradshaw comes from, um, don't exist yet. Yeah. They, no. they exist after Blackmoor goes boom. Oh, okay. okay. So so the, the, uh, they are the repercussions of Blackmoor going boom. Those yeah. dwarves are created. Yeah. yeah. And then from those dwarves, the gnomes later on, the gnomes come through. Yeah. yeah. So, so they're basically a refinement of a refinement. Well, as the gnomes put it, everything gets better in, in time when you work on it and perfect it. Well, you, you never get it right the first time. That's my theory on on. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you you guys are going to have a chance to talk with uh, Raphael about various things about technology. Absolutely. And um, considering I didn't actually expect you to get uh, that far into the uh, storyline uh, tonight, um, yep. I, I might end up calling it a, a stop for there so you can figure out what you want to ask a highly technological society. Yep. 
uh, considering the things you've seen in the past and what's happening to you at the moment in the future. Because yeah. technically they're all tied together. Indeed. And, and how, how much of the, uh, what, what we, we know, know of the past, past and take what we know of the future, future we, we want, want to let the black boys know about now. now. <laughs> and, and and I thought you'd also like well, uh, you you'd also know from Drazzle that tampering with time can get you arrested. Yes. <laughs> so you have to be careful not to tell them things that they can't know before they know it. Yeah. yeah. As Drazzle has told you uh, many times, he won't tell you what you need to know until after you, uh, he's allowed to tell you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, but it could be one thing, thing that. Uh, If, if, if Dimitri, Dimitri finds that he can get access, access to the computer, computer systems, systems uh, he, he will certainly be keen to be reviewing those significantly. Uh, hopefully, if Raphael is happy to continue to help him, uh, with his advice and guidance, so there will be any book that we can teach us. Um, because obviously, yes, he doesn't actually know enough about nuclear physics to know how he might have be in that particular topic. Well, uh, it, it, it's the uh, descriptive um, that uh, Dimitri got out of it was unlimited power. And it will be fine, obviously. So I, think I think that Dimitri, Dimitri likes cattle. cattle. Um, but, yeah. yeah. Dimitri, Dimitri will keep it if he can actually uh, access the database of the computer to see if he can find out about the data. <laughs> But, but yeah, that could probably talk about that and discuss next time. time. Yep. So. And that way you have a fortnight to figure out what questions you'd like to ask uh, yep. and uh, plan it so it doesn't actually get your characters chased by the time fiends as they were in the uh, previous storyline. Yeah. Yep. But, but that's okay because okay, Dimitri's now armed with a lot more uh, sling stones and bolts that have been temporarily, temporarily affected. affected. <laughs> he has, yes. <laughs> he deliberately bought some while going through the uh, extra <laughs> while with the big pieces. Although I realised after we bought them during the middle of our time cut experience, experience that they wouldn't actually be useful because he'd have to buy them every time to get him to go back to the same period and start each of them iteration. But by the, By the end, end of it, it, he currently got. I still have to keep my law because. Well, hey, you, you could leave each set in the um, Redrian's Inn and then come and collect it later. Yeah. Or you could have grabbed some equipment from uh, Drazzle's um, house. Yeah, although I didn't just have the sort of knickknacks of tossed away hundreds of time waste potentials. But, okay. All good. All good. All good. Mm. Thank, thank you very much. So thank, thank you very you. much for playing tonight. Thank you for being able to make it again, Martin. Hopefully you feel a bit better. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. So, so hopefully uh, we are able to be more consistent. consistent. But it, it's all good. We managed to get through um, last year, <laughs> so... Okay, so... Yeah. You guys I'll take care of yourselves. Yep. I'll, I'll see, see you, Martin, next... Wednesday? Next Wednesday, Wednesday yes. and, and we may be doing Wednesday. Shadow Run on Friday because half Sorry. the half the D and D group for Friday is unavailable, so we may be doing oh, Shadow okay. Run on Friday. Okay. My Shadow Run. Uh, yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, 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 back back so. <laughs> yep. Plenty of time. Yep. yep. All good. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll see you on Friday. Friday. I'll see no. you on Friday. Okay. okay. Bye. 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 Bye